Hi everyone, my name's Diabedor, and today I'm going to show you how to get an unlimited supply of smithing stones in Elden Ring. This guide will be oriented toward new players, and will provide a detailed walkthrough of all the steps leading up to acquiring the items we need. With that said, more experienced players will also find this guide helpful for grabbing items they may have missed, or for starting new characters. There will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip around to the segments that are relevant to you. There are a lot of places to find smithing stones, and a few places to farm them, but those methods have a couple issues. Smithing stones picked up from the environment don't respawn, so you can run out of them pretty quick, and farming enemies who drop smithing stones can take forever. Instead, we're going to get the smithing stone miner's bell bearings, which allow you to purchase an infinite amount of them from the twin maiden husks. There are 9 bell bearings in total, which give us access to everything but the ancient dragon smithing stones. Some of these bell bearings are dropped by bosses, and most of them can only be obtained in later areas of the game, which can only be accessed after beating certain story bosses. There will be spoilers for Elden Ring's story in this video, but this guide will show you the easiest way to beat all the bosses that stand between us and those delicious smithing stones. Because we'll be fighting a few bosses along the way, I recommend you follow my golden seed guide to level up your flasks as we go along. With that said, let's get started. Our first objective is to get the regular smithing stone bell bearing number one, from Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. So the first things I did here was I went over to Kale at the Church of LA and I grabbed his three cracked pots and the crafting kit that he sells for a total of 1200 runes. Then I headed north to the Gatefront Ruins where I grabbed the map of Limgrave and I talked to Melina at a site of grace and she gave me the spectral steed whistle to summon Torrent. After that I fast traveled back to the Church of LA where I talked to Rena the Witch who gave us the spirit calling bell and now we're going to head to the west onto this beach over here where we're going to find a merchant that will sell us a club which we're going to use to kill a couple bosses. Along the way we're going to encounter this troll. Killing him is optional but he drops a thousand runes on death so while I'm in the area I figured I'd kill him and get the runes so I can buy the club. I believe the club costs 600 runes. If the troll is too much for you then you can kill the Godric soldiers around the gatefront ruins. They drop 60 runes each or thereabouts. Uh, so you only need to kill about 10 of them to get the amount of runes we need for the club. But killing the trolls should be pretty easy. So we come over and talk to this merchant sitting under this ruin. He sells a bunch of smithing stone ones which we're going to purchase. And he also sells the club which we're going to purchase. Now you see my character already has a club that's because I started as wretch. But if you haven't started as wretch then you can purchase a club from this guy. I went for the club specifically because it's just the easiest strike weapon to get. But any strike weapon will do such as hammers, great hammers, etc. After that I came back up to the Gatefront Ruins where we're going to head down to the Limgrave Tunnels that you see here on the map. So it's that orange circle spot. Whenever you see one of those it's like a tunnel or a cave and you should check it out. Along the way I'm going to stop inside the Gatefront Ruins where the cellar contains this chest that has the Whetstone Knife and the Storm Stomp Ash of War. So here's a pro tip. You'll see that the Limgrave Tunnels entrance is at the bottom of this little ravine here and it's a pretty high fall so it might be hard to judge whether or not you can survive it. So if you pick up Ruin Fragments, which you can find in the ruins all over the place, you can craft Rainbow Stones and if you toss a Rainbow Stone off a ledge, if it explodes like that on impact, then it's a lethal fall. And then I fell and died anyway like an idiot. But yeah, so uh, you want to move down to a lower part of this cliff before you actually jump down into the lake. And then after that you can head into the tunnels. These tunnels are part of the reason why we grabbed the club. So these guys here are really weak to strike. They're resistant to slash and standard and pierce. But they are weak to strike and elemental damage. So using the club is really good against them. So inside the tunnels you're going to find about I think it's nine smithing stone ones. Um, so I cut that out for the sake of brevity. But explore the cave and find them. You can pick them up off walls and stuff. Um, and the enemies might also drop them. So... Uh, killing them is good. And then at the end of the tunnel, there's this stone digger troll. Um, as you saw, you pick up a couple large glintstone scraps and a couple regular glintstone scraps uh, throughout the tunnel. And if you use those against him, he's super easy to kill. I like to kill that troll because he drops a bunch of runes, which we can use to upgrade our weapons. So if you head back to the Church of LA, we can use the smithing stone to upgrade our weapons. You can only go as high as plus three right now, but fortunately, that's what the smithing stone ones take us up to. It requires 12 smithing stone ones to upgrade the club to plus 3. After that we're going to head west of the gate front through the storm gate and into storm hill. We're going to stop by a bunch of points of interest over here to pick up some useful items.
When you head through the storm gate, you're gonna encounter this ruin with a troll on it. You can just run past all these guys, you don't have to fight them if you don't want to. Along the way, make sure you grab that golden seed that's there. And when you see that shack up on that ridge, instead of heading to it, we're gonna head to the east over here, where we're gonna grab a couple extra smithing stone ones. Then we're gonna go to the shack, called the Stormhill Shack, where we're gonna grab this stone sword key. We're gonna need a few of these, so make sure you pick them up throughout your playthrough. After that, we're gonna follow the road directly to the east of the Stormhill Shack, where we're gonna come across the Warmaster's Shack, and talk to Warmaster Bernal. Bernal sells a couple different useful Ashes of War. There's one in particular that we want called Endure, but there's also a bunch of other useful ones here that you should pick up if you have the runes for them. In particular, I really like Impaling Thrust. I didn't end up using Impaling Thrust in this guide, but it is really useful to have if you need an alternative to the Uchi Katana that we're going to be using. Also while we're here, just to the east of the Site of Grace, you're going to see these three root resins that we're going to grab. We're going to need these to craft Blood Grease later on. They respawn when you rest at a Site of Grace, so you can farm a whole bunch of them here. I recommend stocking up before you leave. Then we're going to head just south of the War Master's Shack. In this area, there's a bunch of trolls patrolling around, and there's this statue here that we can't break open, but the trolls can. So all you have to do is lure one over and have him hit it, and then it breaks open and drops a bunch of smithing stone ones and a smithing stone two, which we can't use quite yet. After that, I'm going to head back over to the War Master's Shack, where we're going to mark down a few points of interest to grab some more stuff. Our first stop is just to the north of the War Master Shack. You'll find a field where there's a couple magma slugs and there's a bunch of smoldering butterflies. You can farm these butterflies by grabbing them here, then going back to the War Master Shack and resting at the Site of Grace, which causes them to respawn. You're going to want to stock up on a bunch of them because we're going to need them to make fire pots later. Then we're going to head to the east and kill this knight riding on this horse. He's really easy to kill if you use something like Impaling Thrust. I just went with the club and I hit him with a bunch of Charge R2s as he came at me. And you'll see, after you break his stance or kill the horse, he gets knocked off and you can hit him with a repose while he's on the ground. When he dies, he drops the Golden Vow Ash of War, which we're going to use because it's a really nice buff to have. And I'm also going to stop by this ruin over here and grab the Lance. I didn't end up using the Lance in this guide, but it's really good to have, especially if you put Impaling Thrust on it. Then we're going to head to the east to this bridge over here. On the bridge, there's a Mad Pumpkin Head, but you can just run past him. Also on the bridge, there's a couple smithing stones, and then across the bridge, there's this merchant who sells another cracked pot and a few more smithing stones. By this point, you should have enough to upgrade the weapons that we need for the next couple of areas, but these are nice to pick up just in case you need a couple more. Now I'm going to head back to the west side of the bridge, and we're going to head up to the Death Touch Catacombs to the northwest. While you're in the area over here, you'll also hear Alexander the Warrior Jar talking, but uh, I'm not going to worry about him right now because he's not relevant to this guide. Inside the Death Touch Catacombs, we're just going to run past all these skeletons here. And then once you head down the stairs, go to your right, and there's this little semi-secret pathway here. And this takes us over to the Uchi Katana, which we're going to be using throughout the majority of this run. The Uchi requires 15 decks to wield, so you can level up your character, but there's also a couple items we can grab to increase our decks. We're not using it right now, so don't worry about it too much at this point in the guide. Now I'm going to head over to the east end of Limgrave, where we're going to go to the Mistwood and grab a few more important items. You can find this Site of Grace really easily by just following the road. As you can see, after the bridge, it forks and you head north, and that takes you right to the Site of Grace. There's a few points of interest here that we're going to grab a couple items in. So first, you're going to want to head to the east and grab the map. For the rest of this guide, I'm going to be working under the assumption that you're grabbing maps as you head through the areas. You'll notice that you can see where the map is located on your blank map before you actually pick up the map of the area. So make sure you keep an eye out for those and pick them up. After that, we're going to come over to the Minor Earth Tree. It's this gigantic tree here, you can't miss it. And at the base of it, we're going to grab the Spiked Crack tier and the Green Spill Crystal tier. Then we're going to head all the way to the north of the Mistwood, and we're going to stop by the Third Church of America. The Third Church has a couple really important items in it. So the first one is this over here, the Flask of Wondrous Physic. And also, by the Statue of America over here, there is a Sacred Tier. You can use the Sacred Tier to upgrade the amount of health or FP that your flasks restore. Now that we picked up the Wondrous Physic, we have the option to mix it at any Site of Grace. You can put any combination of two Crystal Tiers into the Wondrous Physic, and when you consume it, you get the buff that those Tiers provide. You only get one charge of the Physic, but it refills whenever you rest at a Site of Grace or die. 
We're also going to run across this archway over here, where we'll find a graveyard that has a bunch of golden runes in it, which are useful because they give you a bunch of runes when you sell or use them. And we're also going to grab this cookbook that gives us the recipe for sleep pots, which we're going to need toward the end of this guide. We're done with Limgrave for now, and so we're going to head up to the north, where we're going to go to Lyurnia of the Lakes. If you follow this road, you'll come to a broken bridge, but on the west side of it, there's a secret path that takes you around Stormvale Castle up into Lyurnia. So this is the end of the bridge. There's a crafting recipe you can grab there. We're not going to use it for this guide, but make sure you grab it. And then you'll see this little pathway that takes us up to this ridge that leads us around Stormvale Castle into Lyurnia of the Lakes. From the Sight of Grace, we're going to head to the west to a church over here called the Church of Irith, and then we're going to head north into Lyurnia itself. We stop by the Church of Irith, where we're going to grab another Sacred Tear. There's also an NPC you can talk to here, but his quest is not relevant for this guide, so I didn't bother with it. And then when we follow the road past the Soldier Camp, we're going to find the Sight of Grace with a merchant nearby. This guy sells a few useful items, so he sells a bunch of smithing stones, which you can pick up if you haven't upgraded your weapons yet, and he also sells a lantern. I didn't buy it here, but you should. And after that, we're going to follow the sunken road to the north, where we're going to grab the map. There's three wraith collars around it. If you try to just run past them and grab the map, then they'll knock you off the horse and kill you. So what I like to do is lead them away a little bit, and then I grab the map. And then you can just keep heading north up the road till you get to another side of grace. When you rest at a Site of Grace outside of Limgrave, Melina will talk to you and offer to take you to the Round Table Hold. There's a blacksmith there that can upgrade your weapons past plus three, so make sure you do that if you have the smithing stones for it. And then from this Site of Grace, we're going to head to the west, following the cliffside. It's really foggy here, so you can't really see it, but there's an enormous plateau that you can see from off in the distance. We're going to head underneath this thing, and then we're going to make a right and come out the north side of it. And we're going to grab the Site of Grace on this gazebo called the Folly on the Lake. This is a really useful spot to farm mushrooms, which we're going to need for fire pots. So from the Site of Grace, if you come out to the east by this tree, there's two mushrooms over here. And then you're going to run around the corner to the north. And underneath this big rock, there's four more. And then you can just rest at the Site of Grace and farm mushrooms here to your heart's content. The best spot to farm mushrooms in the entire game. There's also a bunch of smithing stones around Lyurnia that we're going to pick up, so the first ones that we're going to grab, if you head north and slightly to the east of the gazebo, you'll find this other gazebo with a bunch of lobsters around it. Be careful, um, these things will fuck you up. And inside the gazebo, there's a bunch of smithing stone twos. I haven't grabbed this map quite yet, but this is to give you a general idea of where we're going. Then directly to the east of that last gazebo, we're going to find the Boil Prawn Shack, so grab this Site of Grace. We can't talk to this NPC quite yet, but we're going to come back to him later. From the Boil Prawn Shack, we're going to head directly to the south, where we're going to find a little island with a bunch of Albinarics on it. And there's also a basin here that contains the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier, which you can put in your Physic to increase your Dexterity by 10 points, so you can use the Uchi Katana if you don't meet the 15 Dex requirement. Then I headed up and grabbed the map, so this area is called the Academy Gate Town. Just to the southeast, there's a gazebo there that has a couple more smithing stones. And here are the areas that we just visited, so the Boilerprawn Shack, that little island. Here's the gazebo that was surrounded by the lobsters, and then the folly on the lake. If you have the map, you'll see these two trees right here. That's where the four mushrooms are, so you can easily just run back and forth uh, and grab mushrooms from them. And then that little gazebo that I just pointed out has a bunch of smithing stone threes on it, which are going to come in handy in a little bit. From the side of Grace, we're going to head over here. So you see this little L-shaped building next to the Finger Reader Crone? Right next to it, there's a golden seed that we're going to grab. And then if you head north of that, there's a pathway up to the south gate of Rhea Lucaria. So there's your golden seed. And then we're going to head north, and just around the corner, there's a staircase that takes us to the raised part of the gate town. There's another smithing stone three on the ground there, so make sure you grab it. And then past that flame chariot, we're going to come to the south Rhea Lucaria gate. So you're going to see there's a map in front of it because we can't actually enter in through the gate. That map tells us where to get a key to go through the gate, and that's this island over here to the west. So we're going to take a shortcut to get down to that, and along the way there's also a couple other items we're going to grab here. And after that we're going to also head over to the east over here to this gazebo, as well as this swamp over here where there's another gazebo. There's also these two rocks, so you'll see they're sticking out like northwest at a 45 degree angle. So if you go to the tip of one of them and then go down halfway between the two tips, put a marker there because there's another item we're going to grab over there. And so here I have zoomed out so you can see where all the map markers are that we're going to be heading to. 
The shortcut we're going to take to get down to the map is you come over to this balcony to the southwest of the uh, site of grace and then you can just jump down onto this rock. As long as you land on the rock you shouldn't take fall damage. Uh, you might take fall damage but uh, you won't die as long as you land on the rock. And then right next to it there's that graveyard with a bunch of runes in it that we're going to want to grab. And there's also this gazebo with a couple smithing stone twos. Then you can follow the cliff around the corner, and that takes you up to this island over here. So the key is guarded by a sleeping dragon. If you come around the back side of this little rock formation, you can jump up here. And then if you crouch, as long as you stay pretty close to this rock here, uh, the dragon won't aggro. If you get too close to it, then it wakes up, regardless of whether or not you're making noise. But as long as you hug the wall there, then it won't wake up. So you can jump down, grab the key, and then you can fast travel back over to the site of Greece. Now we're going to take the shortcut down again, and this time we're going to head to the east, to the gazebos that we marked over here. So the very first gazebo we saw is this one. That has a teleporter, so we're not going to go to it quite yet. Instead, we're going to head over to the second gazebo and grab a bunch of smithing stone threes. Then we're going to head south to that last marker we placed, and you'll see there's this giant Miranda flower here. Underneath it are two chairs, and on one of the chairs is a corpse with a bunch more smithing stone threes. Now we take that teleporter gazebo, and that brings us over here to the map for the west side of the Urnia. So this saves us a considerable walk, as you can see, which is just nice, especially since I'm fat. From this spot that we teleported to, we're going to head north to this area over here, past those ruins. But uh, just to the southwest, first we're going to grab this site of grace over here. And I also want to point out, you see those balloons floating above the lake? If you attack them with throwing knives or a bow or something, they pop and it'll give you a golden rune. They don't respawn, but it's a nice little, you know, item to grab. So in the ruins, there's an illusory wall. Just hit it and it disappears. Grab the Sight of Grace and you can talk to this troll named E.G. And he sells infinite somber smithing stone ones and twos. Now, the somber smithing stone bell bearing number one gives you infinite of these that you could turn in at the Twin Maiden Husks. You have to kill an enemy called a Falling Star Beast to get that, and that's a real bitch to do. So it's better to just come to EG when you need Somberstone 1s and 2s. EG can also upgrade weapons for you, so I used him to upgrade the club to plus 5. Plus 5 is more than enough for the boss that we're going to have to kill with this club, so I wouldn't go past plus 5 or plus 6. You can use the Smithing Stone 3s to go up to plus 9, but those are better saved to upgrade the Uji Katana. And then as you saw on the map, there's another tunnel we're going to, so that's called Ray of the Karia Crystal Tunnel. We're going to take a little shortcut to get over there. So you head in through the south gate, and that takes you to the main academy gate of Ray of the Karia. You came out of that floating seal there. Uh, you can go down the bridge, and there's some items there if you want. And then that's the same with this bridge. So on the northeast bridge over here, there's a golden seed all the way at the end of it, so make sure you grab that. And then you can interact with the seal, and that'll teleport you over to the east gate of Ray of the Karia. So we're going to grab the nearby set of grace because we're going to have to come back here later. And now it's time to head down to the crystal tunnel. So we're on top of an enormous cliff here, but there's a shortcut we can use to get down. If you come to this lower part of the cliff on the west side of it, if you look down to the ground level, there's a spirit spring we can jump down into. So if you're on torrent, if you land in a spirit spring from any height, you don't take any fall damage. And then from here, we're just going to run over to the tunnel. I'm going to cut out most of the inside of this tunnel for the sake of brevity, but uh, pro tip, use fire pots against the miners here. Um, they're really weak to strike damage, and they're also weak to elemental damage, and that includes fire. Um, and so that's really effective against them, especially if there's like groups of them. Um, I'm also going to make sure to put Endure on the club while we're at the set of grace here. Inside this tunnel, I think there's like 8 or 9 smithing stone 3s, so make sure you keep an eye out for them and grab them as you come across them. But you see here, I'm hitting these guys with fire pots and it just mercs them. So if you're having trouble with any of them that cast magic or anything at you, just hit them with fire pots and that'll uh, kill them real quick. And then the boss of this tunnel is super easy. So usually it'll open up by throwing two discs at you so you can get behind it and hit it with a backstab. So our strategy to kill this thing is super simple. Use Endure, that way you can attack it without it knocking you out of your attack animation. And all you gotta do is hit it with two charged heavy attacks on the club. That'll break its stance. After its stance is broken, it becomes super weak to all damage, and you can kill it super easily with the club. And then it drops the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number one. So we're done using the club for now, and we're going to want to upgrade the Uchi Katana. So I'm going to head back to the Round Table Hold and give that Bell Bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks. And now, if you go to the Purchase option, you can tab over to the Bolstering Materials section, and you'll see that they sell infinite Smithing Stone 1s and 2s. 
So we're going to buy 12 of each so that we can upgrade the Uchi Katana to plus 6. And then we also have a bunch of Smithing Stone 3s that we picked up. And we're going to use those to upgrade the Uchi to plus 9. I don't show it here, but I also sold a bunch of the golden runes that we picked up to Hug, so that I can get a bunch of runes to level up my dexterity, and then dump a couple points into Vigor. For the next bell bearing, we need to head up to the Altus Plateau. The easiest way to do that is to use the Grand Lift of Dectus at the north end of Liurnia. In order to use the Grand Lift, we need to grab the two halves of the Dectus Medallion. The first half can be found in Fort Height at the southeast end of the Mistwood. While we're at Fort Height, we're also going to grab the Golden Seed that's located just outside, and then inside the fort itself, there's a bunch of Blood Roses that we're going to pick up, though we'll farm more later, and there's a cookbook that gives us the recipe to craft Blood Grease, which we're going to need later on. Then we're going to head to the top of Fort Height, and at the top of the tower, inside a chest, is the left half of the Dectus Medallion. You can also kill this knight while you're here, and he drops a cool Ash of War called Bloody Slash, but uh, he's pretty tough, so don't get owned. After that, we're going to head back up to the third Church of America. Right behind it is a little pond, and inside this pond, hidden behind a bunch of bushes, is a teleporter that'll take us over to the Bestial Sanctum in the Dragon Barrow. You can open this door and go inside the Sanctum if you want. I didn't do it because it's not relevant to this guide. As you can see, we've traveled a pretty significant distance. We're now in the Dragon Barrow, which is a pretty high level area, so the enemies here are going to hit really hard. So be careful not to get owned. Anyway, we're going to go around the staircase to avoid aggroing that gargoyle, and we're going to head south toward the minor Erd tree off in the distance. Before this gigantic bridge, there's a set of grace that you're going to want to grab because there's a dragon on the bridge. You can run past him, but if he hits you, he'll probably one-shot you, so it's safer to grab the grace. I also grabbed a bunch of these fulgur blooms along the way, which might be helpful later on. And then we go past the Erd tree. Right behind it is a spirit spring that brings us on top of this cliff. You can stop by and farm some runes from Grail. I have a video about it, so check it out if you need extra runes. And then we're going to head inside Fort Faroth. You can run past all the bats on this lower level and just climb up the ladder. They can't follow you up. And at the top of the ladder is the right half of the Dectus Medallion. Now that we've collected both halves of the Dectus Medallion, it's time to head up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. So from the east right of the Carrier Gate, you're going to follow the highway up to the north. Along the way, we're going to stop by the Bellum Church, where we're going to grab a Sight of Grace and a Sacred Tear. While I'm here, I just want to point out that if you follow this pathway down, it takes you down this hill here. And at the bottom of it, there's a golden seed. You can also see there's a dungeon there. That has a whole bunch of smithing stones in it, so you might want to grab those while you're in the area. But I didn't bother to, because we're going to get an infinite supply anyway. Don't forget to grab the sacred tier, and then we're going to stick to the northwest side of this area, and follow the cliff. You don't want to get too close to the road itself, because there's a bunch of trebuchets up here that'll shoot at you while you're on the road. So if you stay on the west side there, then they can't attack you. Now we're at the Grand Lift of Dectus, and I just want to let you know before you take it, that there's a bunch of things down here on the south half of the map that change once you go up to the Altus Plateau. So if you're concerned about that, you want to do some questing or stuff down here. In particular, the Red Main Castle, which is in this area, that's where you fight General Radon. Um, it goes into a festival mode, which locks you out of being able to pick up some items there until you kill Radon. And there's a couple other quest lines that change ever so slightly. It's nothing that locks you out of any content, but it's worth considering uh, that you might not want to go up to the Altus Plateau super early in the game. Um, but for the sake of this guide, we're just going to do it. Like I said, you're not going to be missing out on anything. It might just shift around the order uh, in which you're going to do a couple quests and pick up a few key items. Anyway, so now we're in the Altus Plateau, and we're going to immediately head to the north, to this little rock thing over here uh, with a set of grace on it. The first thing we're going to do is head to the east following the road. You can just barely make out right now that there's a little fork in the road here. So in the middle of this fork, there's another set of grace that you're going to want to grab. And then if you follow the north fork, there's a golden seed and there is the map for this area. So those are the things we're going to pick up first. While we're at it, we're also going to keep following the road to the north. That takes us to this broken bridge where there's a finger reader crone and a merchant. This merchant sells a cookbook that gives you a crafting recipe for lightning pots. As you might expect, they're like fire pots, but instead of fire, they are lightning. They're a lot better in my opinion because they're crafted with fulgur bloom, which is a lot easier to farm than uh, smoldering butterflies. Um, and they may come in useful for an enemy we're going to encounter in a little bit. So now we head back to the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace, and we're going to take this big road to the east. Now, instead of going up the staircase itself, 
We're going to go just to the south of it and we're going to hug the wall and follow that up towards the city. On this big road staircase, whatever you want to call it, there's a whole bunch of enemies that I don't feel like dealing with. So instead, we just stick by this. You do have to run past the Tree Sentinel duo. Um, they will chase you through this gate, but you can outrun them and they can only follow you so far before they despawn. So there's a set of grace over here. You can just run up and grab it. It's like, oh no, oh my god, he's about to kick my ass, but he's going to immediately just stop attacking and disappear. So don't worry too much about him. Right next to the grace, there are two golden seeds, and there's also a map for Lane Tell, which is the east side of the Altus Plateau. From the side of grace, we need to head directly to the east. There's the sealed tunnel down in the moat over here. So to get down to it, if you head straight to the east, you'll see this little peninsula thing, whatever you want to call that. I don't know what the hell that's called. But uh, that leads you down into the moat safely. Also, if you go up the staircase, there's two more golden seeds up there. Just be careful on the staircase because uh, a gargoyle will spawn uh, if you go too far up the stairs. So you want to stick on the side of it like we did for the other road. The sealed tunnel has a ton of illusory walls in it, so keep an eye out for them. So we're going to go through this first one, and then just inside, there's a chest over here that contains the second Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Baron. This is like a mid-level area, so the enemies here can hit pretty hard. Be careful of them. Uh, while we're here, there's also a bunch of Smithing Stone 5s that you can grab, uh, which are going to come in handy. So make sure you go through this tunnel and loot it. As usual, I'm cutting out most of this tunnel for the sake of brevity, but I want to show you in this big room, so, you know, this is enormous chasm, there's a virgin abductor on one side, and there's a breakable statue on the other. And just like the troll from way earlier in the video, we need to get the virgin abductor to hit the statue and break it for us, and inside the statue are a few smithing stones. So all you gotta do is just lure it over here, dodge out of the way before it hits you, and then you can grab the item. It's three smithing stone sixes. The abductor is really weak to lightning, so if you have a bunch of lightning pots, or if you grab lightning grease or like lightning spells, uh, you can use those against this thing. You don't have to kill it while you're here, but it makes it a lot easier to get out because you have to get up that ladder. As you can see, there's a message at the bottom of the ladder because people like to leave messages there as a troll, uh, and that can make it hard to actually climb the ladder. Um, so killing the Virgin Abductor is nice. There's also a Somber Stone 5 down here, so if you're using a Somber weapon, that could be really helpful to you. After that, we're going to go back up to that big broken bridge where the merchant was, and we're going to head down the bridge carefully. Uh, be careful here in particular, because uh, you can fall to your death there if you just try to run off of it. Uh, we're going to head over to the Altus Tunnel on the east side of the Great Forest. The Altus Tunnel is pretty short, so I'm not even going to show any footage of it, but there are a bunch of Smithing Stone 5s in here, so make sure you pick them up. And then the boss of this area is not one, but two Crystallians. Oh my god, how horrible. So if we're going to do the same thing that we did before, use Endure, and then just hit it with two Charge R2s on the club. And now this thing is the easiest enemy to kill in the entire game. Uh, I like to go for the Spear one first, because it just pesters you a lot more than the Ring Blade one does. Uh, and then just do the same thing for the fucking Ring Blade. Uh, and then on death, these guys drop the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number two. Now we're going to give those two Bell Bearings over to the Twin Maiden Husks. And now we can purchase an infinite number of Smithing Stone three and four, as well as Somber Stone threes and fours. So you're going to want to buy a bunch of fours and upgrade the Uchi Katana up as high as you can go. With the Smithing Stone 5s that I picked up, I was able to get this thing up to plus 14. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get it up to plus 16 if you pick up more Smithing Stone 5s from the tunnels uh, and use the Smithing Stone 6s that were in that statue. The next thing we need to do is kill the Draconic Tree Sentinel so we can get into Lane Dell. There's a couple different ways to cheese the Sentinel, but I like to actually fight it. But I want to make it easy, you know? I don't want to have it be too challenging. So we're going to get the Antsper Rapier and use Scarlet Rot and Poison against it to kill it. So in order to get the Antsper Rapier, we need to kill an NPC that could be relatively tough because she's a Tarnished like us. So to make killing her easy, we're going to go down to the Shifra River. All the way at the north end of the Shifra River is this elevator that we're going to take up. This elevator takes us up to the deep Shifra Well in Kaled. If you head to the south from here, that just takes you into Kaled. There's also a giant bear, so you probably don't want to go that way. Instead, we're going to head to the northwest. 
We're gonna pass through this canyon, past all these caterpillar guys. The ones that are rolled up into balls will explode after a few seconds when you get close to them, so be careful of that. And then right underneath this golem archer, there's the spiked palisade shield. You're gonna need 20 strength to be able to wield this, or I think 14 if you two-hand it. After that, we're gonna go to the Lux Ruins. So from the Grand Lift of Dectus and the Altus Plateau set of grace right next to it, you can just head directly up to the north. Um, there's like a hill here that leads right up to the ruins. Um, there's also just underneath the ruins is the Urtree Gazing Hill grace. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from. Uh, and then you can just take a little shortcut uh, up the wall here. Uh, you know, it's semi-tricky, but shouldn't be too hard to do. And then there's a scarab here. You're going to need a ranged weapon of some kind. Um, lightning pots, fire pots should do it for you. In this clip, I'm using a uh, ballista or a jar cannon. So you got to shoot the scarab. If you attack it or get too close to it without killing it, then it teleports away and you need to reload the area to kill it again. Uh, so try to kill it in one shot. On death, it drops the Shield Crash Ash of War, which we're going to put on the Spike Palisade Shield. We're going to use this to kill the NPC, because if you hold down L2, it hits five times in a row, which stuns her and knocks her down, and it does bleed build up on every hit, and so it makes her bleed out really fast, and that's really effective against her. Then from that, we're going to head directly to the north of the Lux Ruins, and that takes us up to the Shaded Castle. Make sure you grab a set of grace here, because the NPC is around the west side of it, uh, and... There's no Stake of America by her, so you want to grab the grace so you don't have to run all the way back here. So just circumnavigate around the Shaded Castle to the west. You'll find this little graveyard statue area, uh, and inside it, there's this NPC, Male Murray. Uh So in this clip, I'm using the Uchi Katana with Storm Stomp. I strongly recommend to use Shield Crash. Um, I have a bunch of other videos where I show off how effective Shield Crash is against NPCs. Um, Storm Stomp is also really nice. We picked it up in the uh, Gatefront Ruins cellar. Uh, alongside the whetstone knife. You see, when I hit her with Storm Stomp, it stuns her, and then I get a guaranteed hit in afterwards. So that's called a true combo. Um, and then I'm using Blood Grease on the Uchi Katana, uh, and that makes her bleed out really fast because the Uchi also does bleed build up by default. Uh, and when you kill her, she drops the Ansper Rapier. Now we need to go pick up the Poisonous Mist Ash of War, which can be located in the Swamp of Aeonia in Kaelid. I chose to take a little shortcut to get there a bit faster, so I headed to the east of the first step set of grace to the Dragonburnt Ruins, and I used the Trap Chest, which teleports us over to the Celia Crystal Tunnel in Caleb. Inside this tunnel, there's a couple things you can grab while you're here. Um, there's a bunch of Smithing Stone Fives, so if you need more, you can explore this tunnel for that. Uh, I didn't bother to do that except for these couple that are right here, because we're about to get an infinite supply of Smithing Stone Fives uh, in a little bit anyway. Um, but if you need to upgrade the Uchi some more or anything like that, um, definitely run around this tunnel and pick up the smithing stones that are here. You can also kill the boss of this tunnel, the Falling Star Beast, if you want the Somber Stone uh, Miner's Bell Bearing number one. Uh, but I didn't bother to do that because it's a boss we gotta kill when you can instead just buy infinite Somber Stone 1s and 2s from EG over by Caria Manor. Make sure you rest at the Site of Grace inside the Celia Crystal Tunnel so that you can fast travel around once you leave it. And then we're going to head directly south of the exit into the Swamp of Aeonia. If you follow the western shoreline, which will be on your right if you're heading south, um, you'll come across this Site of Grace here next to the Ghost. And then if you head just to the east of that, there's this Ash of War Scarab. So here's where it is on the map. You can see relative to the map marker where it is. Uh, and you're going to hit this thing with uh, you know, a ranged weapon of some kind because this one will teleport away, like the one in the Lux Ruins. Uh, I used a Lightning Pot, and it drops the Poisonous Mist Ash of War. This next part is optional, but you might find it helpful. So from the Lasgar Ruins set of grace, we're going to head up to the gazebo by the telescope, and we're going to talk to Raya for her uh, short little quest. She wants us to go to the Boil Prawn Shack, which we already grabbed the set of grace for, uh, and get her necklace back from uh, Bog the Blackguard. So you need to buy it from him for a thousand runes. You could also kill him, but we're not going to kill him. Um, so buy the necklace, and then if you talk to him again, he will now sell you Boiled Prawn. Right. Buy only one Boiled Prawn from him, because we're going to get a better item from him later on. Um, and then he's going to move, and I'll show you where he's going to move later. It's to the moat that's underneath the bridge that the Draconic Tree Sentinel is guarding in the capital outskirts. Uh, and then while we're at it, we're also going to stop over by Murkwater Cave in Limgrave, and we're going to beat Patches so we can purchase the Margit Shackle from him, because we're going to need that later. When you come to the entrance of Murkwater Cave, which I showed you on the map, it's in this ravine here uh, to the east of the gate front. 
uh, you're gonna get invaded by Bloody Finger Narius. With our upgraded weapons, he should be really easy to kill. On death, he drops the Reduvia, which we're also gonna use against the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Once he's dead, we can go inside Murkwater Cave. Inside Murkwater Cave, just follow the path to the right, and you will come into Patches' uh, boss room. So open the chest, and that'll make Patches attack you. Do not kill him. If you kill him, then you can't buy uh, stuff from him. You can get his bell bearing, but he sells you more stuff later on if you don't kill him. So once you get him down to half health, he'll surrender, and then give him a couple seconds, and uh, he'll talk to you. After he finishes his dialogue, you can talk to him directly and exhaust his dialogue, and then he'll tell you to come back later, so I just quit out to reload the area, and then once you come back in, he is now willing to talk to you and sell you stuff. So you're gonna buy Margaret Shackle from him for 5,000 runes, so, uh, you know, sell him some golden runes that we picked up along the way. We're getting Margit Shackle because we're going to need to kill Margit, and the Shackle also works on Morgoth, and so that's going to make killing him easier when we need to do that in a little bit. Now it's time to start making our final preparations before we fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel. So from the capital outskirts set of graves that we already had by the map marker, uh, we're going to follow these stairs and go up into the northern parts of the capital outskirts. Like I said before, there's two golden seeds here. I didn't go up the big staircase there because if you go on the stairs themselves, a uh, gargoyle will fly down and attack you. Also, over here on the map, you see there's uh, that ridge I was pointing out. There's a Sight of Grace on that. I'm not going to grab it right now because there's an enemy over here that's a secret boss fight. Um, and I don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm just going to come up this way. Uh, there's a group of wandering nobles here. And if you kill the one that's holding a chest, he drops a golden rune. And then if you head through the battleground up here to this uh, small staircase, you can make a left. And this takes you over to the Hermit Merchant Shack where there is a Sight of Grace that's uh, the closest grace to the uh, Draconic Tree Sentinel. I also needed a bunch of runes to level up and upgrade the Ansbury Rapier and the Reduvia, so I killed Grail to do that. Um, you'll notice she's still alive afterwards. Normally she only uh, dies and doesn't respawn, um, but you can check out my video for a glitch on how to make her respawn so you can farm infinite runes. Anyway, so upgrade the Ansbury Rapier and the Reduvia. Make sure you have at least 13 Arcane for the Reduvia, and then uh, I just put the rest of my points into Vigor so the uh, Tree Sentinel doesn't one-shot us. And then I put the Poisonous Mist Ash of War with a Poison Infusion on the Ansprey Rapier, and I took Storm Stomp off of the Uchi Katana so that I can have the Unsheathed Ash of War. If you head east from the Hermit Merchant Shack, that takes you to the entrance of Lane Dell, which is guarded by the Draconic Tree Sentinel. But first, we're going to come towards the south into the moat down here, and we're going to talk to the Blackguard where we're going to buy Boiled Crab from him. Boiled Crab is a consumable that increases all of your physical damage negation by 20% for 60 seconds. So the Draconic Tree Sentinel hits really hard and having that will be really helpful. Um, you can also optionally kill the Blackguard here and he will drop his Iron Balls. Um, but I don't recommend doing this because uh, you probably want to finish his quest line um, and you can get them from him after you finish his quest line. I will say that you don't miss out on all that much if you do kill him here, though, so it's really up to you whether or not you do that. I will say that if you're having trouble with the Draconic Tree Sentinel, if you check out my Radagon guide, you'll see how effective this type of fist weapon is, because it's super fast and they hit super hard, um, so they're really effective against everything. But I decided to just stick with the Ant Spur, the Reduvia, and the Uchi Katana. So there's another optional part coming up here. Um, so you're going to see I start off fairly strong here in this fight. Uh, and then I get fucking spanked by him. And so this is actually my second or third attempt fighting him. Um, I kept getting like one-shotted from him because I didn't have any armor. So I decided to go and grab a quick set of armor. Um, I chose to go with the Carrion Knight set because it was just the first one that came to mind. Um, and so that involves heading into uh, Ray Lucaria Academy. Uh, you know, if you didn't start as the wretch, then you're going to have, you know, a, a set of armor. Um, and there's a bunch of other sets of armor you can pick up, so you don't have to go with this one specifically. I just went with it because it was easy to get a full set. Uh, it took me two minutes to just run into Ray Lucaria, and then once you get to the graveyard, you can just jump down behind this tombstone, and you get the full set of Carrion Knight armor right here. Uh, so, you know, it gets decent enough stats, it's not too heavy, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, so this is what I decided to go with. And then pro tip, if you don't know, you can come up into this pathway here, and this takes you back into the graveyard. 
Now it's time for the actual fight to begin. So we're gonna drink our Fuandra's Physic and cast any buffs you've got. You should cast Golden Vow, but I didn't do that. You're also gonna eat a piece of boiled crab. I'm using the Reduvia and the Ansprey Rapier with the Poisonous Mist Ash of War. At the start of the fight, he takes a few seconds before he can actually attack you, so run up to him and hit him with Poisonous Mist. Get a few stabs in. This attack, he always does at the beginning of the fight. Only the front half of the horse has a hitbox, so if you're behind the horse, then it won't hit you. You want to proc Poison and Scarlet Rod on him as fast as possible. It should only take about 7 to 9 stabs to do that. Afterwards, once you see the rot coming off of him, um, he'll also be poisoned by that point. You can switch to the Reduvia and start hitting him with the Ash of War. It has range on it, but if you stay up close to him, you'll hit him with the Blood Blade and the Dagger itself. Uh, and so that gets extra bleed buildup because you're hitting him with two bleed buildups at once. Uh, and then after that, if you only attack him once or twice at a time, uh, like you saw there, I did a third hit and that's why I got hit. Uh, if you hit him once or twice at a time, then he shouldn't have any trouble dodging his attacks. When you get him to half health, he enters phase 2 and he can start doing lightning attacks. So first of all, at any point in the fight, when you get distance from him or heal, he can do these fireballs. It's best to get behind a tree or a rock or something before you heal, or if you make any distance from him, so the fireballs can't hit you. Um, but you saw I double chugged there, and that's why the fireball hit me, because I couldn't dodge. So only heal one flask at a time. Don't ever double chug any attack, because he can punish you if you double chug. Now we're going to look at this again. So I back off, I heal. I should have just done one heal there, and I would have been fine. But I did a second one, and so the fireball is going to hit me, because I can't dodge in time. So that's my fault. And then afterwards, you're going to see he's, since I'm at a distance from him, he's going to do his lightning smite attack. So to dodge this, he puts his shield up, he raises it up a little bit right there, and then he brings it down hard. Once he starts bringing it down, that's when you need to dodge. If you do it too early, you're going to get hit, and obviously too late, you're also going to get hit. If you're closer to him, he can also do this area of effect attack. So this one doesn't actually have a hitbox when he swings the shield, but instead he makes a bunch of spots on the ground where lightning will strike after a few seconds. So to dodge this, just don't be where the lightning is going to strike. You can see the spots on the ground fairly clearly. And you also saw once he was finished swinging his shield, there was a short delay where he had a punish window that I was able to hit him with a couple blood blades. So keep that in mind. This attack hits super hard, but it's actually really easy to dodge. So he does his wave of lightning. You have to dodge toward him once the horse, like, fucking lunges at you. And then afterwards, you're going to see he winds up for a big attack. You can't dodge this part. You can dodge it, but it's really hard to. It's better to run towards him and get behind him. And I did a sprint jump there to get a little extra distance. And that way you just avoid the lightning blast entirely. Let's watch it again. So he charges up the lightning. The horse does that so that's when you dodge toward it and then afterwards don't even bother rolling or attacking just sprint toward him get behind him he rotates a little bit but you shouldn't have too much trouble getting away from him and then i did a sprint jump to get some extra distance and i avoid the blast entirely and then there's a punish window afterwards when you attack him with the blood blades only hit him once or twice at a time don't get greedy and keep mashing the attack button the Scarlet Rot and the Poison does a ton of damage to him over time, so you've got time to let that kill him, uh, you know, in between your bleed attacks. And then the Poison wears off after like 30 seconds, so you might want to reapply it earlier. I did it at the very end of the fight, but, you know, uh, keep that in mind that you can keep reapplying the Poison. The Scarlet Rot lasts a lot longer. Anyway, so after killing him, uh, we need to get two Great Runes in order to actually be able to enter Lane Dell. So we have to kill two demigods and get their great runes. I decided to go with Renala and Godric, which are the two easiest ones to kill, especially with our highly upgraded weapons. You can see how much damage I'm doing to this wolf with my uh, plus 16 Uji Katana. Um, so, you know, you shouldn't have too much trouble with these guys. This one in particular, um, I might recommend using Endure instead of Unsheathe. Uh, so you don't get knocked around by his hits too much. And then Renala, I have a full guide on how to beat her if you're having any trouble with her. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, but again, plus 16 weapons makes her super easy, especially if you use Unsheathe. The heavy attack for Unsheathe breaks her stance in three hits, and then you get the repost on her, and it just does a fuckload of damage. So you really shouldn't have any trouble with her at all. And then to get to Godric, we have to kill Margit. He's also super easy, and I have a guide about how to beat him, so check that out if you need help killing him. Uh, this is why we picked up Margit Shackle, because uh, using the Ansper Rapier, we can just hit him a bunch of times, and that makes it super easy to apply Rot to him, and then, uh, you know, hit him with a couple unsheaths from the Uchi, and he is quite dead 
quite quickly. Uh, you know, at that point, I didn't even need to hit him. I could have just run away, and he would uh, die from the rot. Unfortunately, I don't have a guide for Godric yet, uh, but he is kind of laughably easy, so you really probably don't need a guide for him. Uh, it takes, I think, four unsheaths to break his stance, because I think he has like 115 poise, and unsheathed will do 30 poise uh, on hip, so, you know, three, or not three, four will do it. Uh, and yeah, he doesn't hit that hard, especially if you use like boiled crab, uh, and then you, you just fuck him up. And obviously, you can also hit him with the Ansper Rapier to give him uh, Scarlet Rot and Poison, uh, which will do, you know, damage to his health over time. But uh, using the Uchi Katana, you really shouldn't have any trouble killing this guy at all. It's literally canon that this guy is just pathetic, so uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble with him. After you've killed two shard bearers and acquired their great runes, you need to go back to the round table hold and talk to Enya and the uh, two fingers. She'll give you a talisman pouch, and you also got your first talisman pouch from killing uh, Margaret, which is another reason why I went to him specifically. And so now, having talked to her and gotten the two great runes, we can enter Lanedale, the capital city. Lanedale is a whole big open dungeon that you can explore that has a lot of cool stuff in it, um, but if you want to take a shortcut to get through it, then you can jump down onto these rooftops from the rampart, and then this takes you straight to where we need to go. Uh, there's an Erdtree Avatar that spawns here. I decided to kill it because it drops, uh, I think, a Lord's Rune, which is worth like 50,000 runes. Killing this thing is optional. You can totally just run past it to the Site of Grace. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have the extra 50k runes. And then here's the Site of Grace. It's called Avenue Balcony. And then from there, you go past the three knights and climb up the giant dragon. So here's Lane Dell on the map uh, that I'm just going to trace our path. So from the East Capital Rampart, which is the one right after killing the Iconic Trace Sentinel, you come out onto the Rampart. There's a building here that has a elevator in it that you can take down into Lane Dell, but like I said, instead of doing that, I took the shortcut down onto the rooftops. So jump down onto the rooftops, and then that takes you across all the rooftops to the uh, main road of Lane Dell, which we're going to need to come back to, so it's important to see where this is on the map. So this right here is the big main road. That takes us to the Avenue Balcony. And then from the Avenue Balcony, you're going to head to the northwest. There's uh, this area up here that has like a bunch of, I think they're mausoleums, uh, and a bunch of knights. So you're going to run past the knights onto the wing of the giant dragon, uh, and then you can head up the wing, and that takes you to where we are now, which is this rampart. Uh, and you can grab a site of grace called the West Capital Rampart. And so you see here, uh, that's the gigantic dragon that you cannot miss at all. Uh, so yeah, and then from the West Capital Rampart, uh, you're gonna head south, and that will take you to these giant roots, and these roots have a, a bunch of guardians and stuff on them, the ones that have, like, the flowers blooming on them will attack you, so instead of killing them all, I like to just run up to the boss room, and then if you quit out and reload back in, uh, those guys will have despawned and gone back to their original area, uh, so you don't have to fight them or worry about them. Here we're fighting a phantom of Godfrey First Elden Lord. He is immune to all status effects, so uh, the Ansper Rapier and the Reduvia aren't going to help us here. Um, he's also fairly resistant to Slash, so you remember all the way back at the beginning of this guide we picked up the Lance. If you upgrade that and put Impaling Thrust on it, which you can get from Warmaster Bernal at the Warmaster Shack, so if you get the Lance and put Impaling Thrust on it, he is weakest to pierce damage, and so obviously the Lance being a pointy spear will do exclusively pierce damage. Uh, and so Impaling Thrust on the Lance does 33 poise damage on hit, and Godfrey has, I think, 120 poise? Um, I don't think it's 90. I'm pretty sure it's like 100 or 120. Uh, so three or four uh, Impaling Thrusts will uh, stagger him, and you can get a repost on him. Other than that, his moveset's really simple. Um, you know, just dodge when he swings. He's, like, the closest thing this game has to, like, a, a classic boss, you know, um, with no, like, delayed attacks or anything like that. So uh, just take your time, uh, you know, hit him once or twice, and then wait to dodge, and you really shouldn't have any trouble with this guy at all. Uh, if you use elemental damage, he's also weak to lightning, so uh, lightning urns or, um, you know, lightning spells, lightning-infused weapons, those are also all really effective against him. After he dies, make sure you grab the Sight of Grace, because we have to give up another tree root, and uh, it's kind of easy to fall off. He also drops the fourth talisman pouch. Uh, along the way, up to the next spot where we need to go, toward the Erd Tree, uh, there's this Black Knife Assassin. 
you can just run past her and grab the Sight of Grace if you want, and then, you know, regardless of whether or not she kills you uh, or you rest at the Sight of Grace, you'll just respawn right there at the Grace. Um, she doesn't drop anything except some runes on death, so you really don't have to kill her, uh, but I like to kill her because she's fun to kill. If you check out my Black Knife Electo Guide, um, you'll see how to kill these things really easily. Anyway, so head through America's Bedchamber and up to the Elden Throne platform, and where we have to fight Morgoth, the Omen King. He can also uh, be affected by Margit Shackle, so we're going to use that against him. You can only use Margit Shackle on him during Phase 1, so that's before he gets down to 50% health, and it also only works twice, so make sure you make those two uses count. In our case, that means hitting him with Poisonous Mist on the Antipur Rapier, so that we can proc Poison and Scarlet Rot on him. Uh, this attack's really easy to dodge, but I fucked it up, so uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this attack, also super easy to dodge. So he summons the spear, and he winds it back, and if you pay attention to his left foot, so that's on our right because we're facing towards him, once he puts the foot down, right there, that's when you get a dodge. You're gonna see here in a second, I get a little greedy on my hits. Again, as with every single enemy, every single boss in the game, only hit him once or twice. I go for a third hit there, and I couldn't dodge uh, that attack, which is why I got hit there. Uh, so make sure you only hit once or twice in a row. And then I decided to use the second use of the Shackle here, uh, and now I make sure I proc the Scarlet Rod on him. Now it's time to back off, because we can't use the Shackle anymore. Uh, obviously, he does his Reign of Swords. Um, you gotta get away from him, because he also does an explosion there, uh, and then you can just avoid the swords. Uh, and then I switch over to the Uchi Katana, and I start trying to hit him with the Unsheaths. Um, so we only need to do 75% um, of his health worth of damage in this fight, because the Scarlet Rot and the Poison will do 25% of his health. So we only need to hit him for 75%. Uh, and you see, this is his Phase 2 transition. So when he starts coughing, that's when you have to get away from him, because you see there's a big explosion there. So he does that Phase 2 transition at 50% health, um, but I managed to get him down to nearly 25% before he did it. Um, so I got just kind of lucky on that. That's part of the reason why I'm not making this a uh, uh, How to Beat Morgoth Easily guide. Um, because this is a really, like, uh, lucky run against Morgoth, uh, because of that. Um, but yeah, and then at this point, he's still rotted, so I just run away from him and let him die. Um, you know, be a little stylish. Yeah, fuck you, Morgoth. Once he's dead, it's time to go up to the entrance to the earth tree. We can't go in because there's thorns there. Uh, I also just want to point out real quick, Morgoth's corpse will actually be here after you beat him. Uh, and you can talk to him. I didn't do that here, but it, you know, it's a nice little extra dialogue to get if you want. Then you gotta rest at the Set of Grace and talk to Melina. She gives you the rolled medallion and tells you to head to the Forbidden Zone. And again, like I pointed out before, there's the main road of Langdell. So you go to the Avenue Balcony and then you can just head up the road to the big doors. They open up for you. And then there's an elevator beyond that. That takes you up here. Grab the Flame Drake Talisman plus one because we're gonna have to fight the Fire Giant. And then once you get all the way across the bridge, I just want to point out, if you want to activate Morgoth's Great Rune, you can do it at this Divine Tower here, but there's a boss fight that triggers before you actually get to it. So make sure you come down the elevator and grab the Forbidden Zone of Grace, and then that way, if you die during that boss fight, you don't have to run all the way across that fucking huge bridge again. Anyway, and then so now we're going to head north through the uh, Forbidden Zone, up to the Grand Lift of Rold. Uh, it's guarded by a Black Blade Kindred, but you can just run past it, grab the Set of Grace. You should rest at the Grace, um, and that de-aggro's the Black Blade Kindred, um, and then you can just take the lift up to the mountaintops at the Giants. Now that we're finally here, we're very close to the next bell bearing that we can grab. So first, you're going to want to grab the map of the area. There's also a Set of Grace nearby with a strange NPC you can talk to. So in a little bit, we're going to be heading up this way, but first, we're going to stop by these ruins to our south, in this corner, you can pause if you want to get a better look at the map there, but uh, the corner where I put the waypoint is the spot where the entrance to the cellar is, so be careful in these ruins because uh, the Zamanites will fuck you up. But inside the cellar, there is a chest, and inside the chest is the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number 3. Now we need to head north, so underneath this giant rock thing is a path that takes you up to this wall. Uh, there's a golem at this spot on the wall, uh, so it's gonna shoot arrows at you that can knock you off, so be careful. Uh, but after that, there's a set of grace right around here by this bridge, and then you're gonna head all the way up north to the end of this river over here. 
Along the way, I want to point out that if you look to your right, there's a golden seed over there. So if you need any golden seeds, that's where you can grab one. So there's a statue here that we need to break, and uh, we need to get a golem to do it. So just wake up that golem, and then lead him over to the statue and have him hit it. Um, you have to stay pretty close to him to get him to follow you over here, because you're going to see in a second, um, he got bored of me, or like he like lost aggro on me and started walking backwards. So I had to move up to him and uh, get him to aggro. And then he hit the statue. Inside the statue are smithing stone sevens, which we're going to be using uh, in a little bit once we buy uh, fives and sixes uh, using the smithing stone bell bearing that we just picked up. And then after that, we're going to head up this little hill and there's a set of grace over here. So now we need to go across this frozen lake. Uh, on this lake, there's a dragon named Borealis, the freezing fog, and he summons a big blizzard that, uh, you know, obscures your vision once you're crossing the lake. So the way I like to navigate to this next spot we need to go to is if you stand at the Effigy of the Martyr, look at your compass, and you'll see uh, if you go southeast, so the middle uh, pip between south and east, if you go about a third of the way to the right of that, uh, and then you just head straight forward with your compass facing that direction, and then just run straight across the lake, and that takes us where we need to go. Along the way, so here's the blizzard and the dragon spawn. You could fight him if you want, but uh, I'm not going to bother to right now because he's not important here. But anyway, so just keep heading straight. This takes you over to the First Church of America, and just outside is the Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing number 3. We're also going to grab the Sacred Tear that's here, and if you come to this little uh, ridge thing to our east, uh, there's another set of three Smithing Stone 7s on a corpse up here. So now, if you head back to the Round Table Hold, we can turn in that smithing stone miners bell bearing that we just picked up, as well as the somber stone miners, of course. And uh, also, I got the black guards bell bearing, so I can buy boiled crab here as well. Uh, but now we can buy smithing stone fives and sixes, as well as somber stone fives and sixes. Uh, and so you can use these five and six smithing stones to upgrade the uchi katana up to plus eighteen, and then you can use the six smithing stone sevens that we've picked up to get it up to plus 20. After that, we're gonna keep heading through the mountaintops of the giants. So uh, you're gonna come across this chain. Uh, you can see it here now that I picked up the map. So from the first church of America, you head to the west and then south. So you can see this is the path we took. So you're gonna head to the west and then that takes you over to the guardians garrison, this fort here. Uh, and then you're gonna head south of that and there's a chain that takes you across this chasm and there's a site of grace in the map here. And then after that, we're going to go to the southwest corner of this little region, and we're going to get to that church over there. So in the area in front of the church, uh, if you step inside that area, then an NPC named Okina will spawn. Uh, and I don't feel like fighting him. Um, he drops the Rivers of Blood Katana, which is pretty good. But you'll see, if you come around from the north side, you can jump up the little cliff face and get uh, to the church without getting invaded by Okina. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're also going to visit the giant skull that's just south of the church. So you see here, I come over to this little cliff thing, and then you can just jump up this rock here, like so. And now we can go inside the church. Inside the church, there's a site of grace, and there's another sacred tier, so make sure you grab those. And then from here, we're going to go up to this giant skull that's right nearby, and inside the mouth of it, we're going to find a legendary item, which is an ancient dragon smithing stone. So we can use that to upgrade a weapon to plus 25 once we have all the other smithing stones. After that, we need to head to the east and kill the uh, fire giant to be able to go to farm Azula for the final bell bearings. So uh, if you're having any trouble with the fire giant, I have an entire video guide about how to fight him. So I suggest you check that out. But essentially, the strategy here is to infect him with poison and scarlet rot, as usual. And then after that, uh, once he's infected with both of those, we're going to hit him with the Uji Katana. I use Magic Grease because uh, he's weak to magic, though I would recommend you use something like Blood Grease instead, um, so you can build up leads on him. Uh, but yeah, and then you just hit him until he dies. You have a plus 20 or even plus 21 Uji Katana by this point, and he's weak to slash damage, so you should be getting plenty of damage against him. Once he's dead, we're going to head up to the Giant's Forge, and we're going to talk to Melina, and she will take us to Farm Azula. Once we're in Farm Azula, the very first thing we're going to do is grab a Smithing Stone 8, which is going to be very helpful. And then, uh, I'm kind of just cutting through this real quick, but it's a, a pretty linear path to get through uh, Farm Azula. So there's a second Smithing Stone 8 right here where this dragon spawns in, and then just after it, 
If you look on your left in this room, there's a third smithing stone eight. There are a few more smithing stone eights that we can pick up here in Farm Azula uh, before the next boss fight, but I didn't bother to do that because they're kind of really far out of the way, and there's only like, I think like three or four of them. So instead we're going to come to the east and we're going to come to this next site of grace at the uh, Tempest Facing Balcony, and we're going to grab the Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing number four. Then after that we go to the Dragon Temple. So we're going to fight the Godskin Duo here in the Dragon Temple. I like to come down the staircase from the Site of Grace. And then if you head down into this lower area, there's a second Site of Grace you can grab uh, that has a doorway that goes directly into the boss arena, which is this right here. Um, so you don't have to run past the Banished Knights if you die. You can just spawn at that Grace and then go directly into the boss room. So way back in the beginning of this guide, we picked up the crafting recipe for Sleep Pots. And so this is why we need that recipe. So at the Folly on the Lake side of Grace, you can farm mushrooms, and then if you head into this swamp area underneath the Albanaric village, you can grab a whole bunch of Trina's lilies. Unfortunately, the lilies don't respawn, so, uh, you know, if you don't have them, you're gonna have to either farm them, or you can also use something like the Sword of St. Trina against the duo. Um, but, you know, this is a good place to stock up on the materials for sleep pots, uh, which is what the duo are weak to. We're also going to go to the northwest from the Folly on the Lake side of Grace, and that's going to take us over to the Rose Church, where we can stock up on Blood Roses, which are going to be really useful to make Blood Grease, which the Gods can do is also weak to. So you can grab eight Blood Roses inside the church, and then you can go back to the side of Grace, and they will respawn, and this is where you can farm Blood Roses really easily. You can also stock up on Root Resin at the Warmaster Shack in Limgrave, and make a ton of blood grease because we're going to need it for this fight. So at first I tried summoning Bernal and using sleep pots with it, but that doesn't really work because Bernal will wake up the duo. Preferably, what you want to do is put one of them to sleep and then focus on killing the other one. And if Bernal wakes the sleeping guy up, then that doesn't work out. Um, so I ended up getting kind of owned here. If you're out of sleep pots, then Bernal uh, is definitely the way to go with this fight, um, especially if you also use like a spirit ash or something. Um, but I recommend if you have the sleep pots, then do it without Bernal. I'm showing this clip here. This is a failed attempt against a duo. Um, I have Bernal with me, and you can see he's doing fairly well holding his own against the fatty uh, while I'm fighting the skinny guy. Bernal's AI is pretty shitty, so it's kind of RNG whether or not he does well in this fight. Something that makes him really strong is that his Ash of War on his weapon allows him to heal a ton of health when he hits them with it, uh, but he doesn't do it all the time, and so you saw like he was getting his ass kicked there, and then I just died because I, you know, got owned. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this solo, and we're going to use the Sleep Pots, come in through the Sight of Grace, and then uh, immediately run to cover. You're going to want to try to lure them both into a Sleep Pot, preferably. This was optimal right here, because I managed to get both of them with one Sleep Pot. After that... That's when you want to buff, so uh, you should cast Golden Vow, which I didn't do here, and also put Blood Grease on the Uchi Katana. I like to start with the skinny guy. If you hit them with three charged R2s or three unsheathes, then that does a poise break. Um, I could have gotten a repost in there, but the fucking positioning was bad, so we couldn't do it. Um, but you would preferably get the repost, and uh, that does you do a bunch of damage, and then don't get hit by the transition that they do at half health. Then afterwards, you're going to want to take your time and just kill the one guy that's awake using Unsheathe. The other guy will be asleep for 60 seconds, so you have a decent amount of time to kill this guy. And as you can see, I kick his ass. After he dies, you want to keep hitting his corpse until it fully disappears, because you can keep doing damage to the big boss health bar that they both share. And then afterwards, we're going to do the same thing for the second guy. So recast your buffs and then hit this idiot with three charged R2s. Get the repost in on him. You should get a bleed, and then after that, you can hit him with a couple more charge R2s. He'll usually be at half health, so you can then, you know, uh, dodge the phase transition. I already have a charge R2 and an unsheath on him, so I just have to hit him with one more, and that breaks his stance again. And then, bada bang, bada boom, he's dead. And then while his corpse is still there, I'm going to keep hitting him to damage the big boss health bar. Then another one's going to spawn in. It's random which one spawns in, uh, but either way, you can hit him with a sleep pot. It's better if you don't lock onto them when you throw the sleep pot. Just free aim it at the ground at their feet, um, because if you lock onto them, your guy has a tendency to throw past them because he's aiming at their chest and they'll dodge. So it's better if you free aim it at their feet. And then it's just rinse and repeat. So three charge R2s. That's number two. Number three. Hit him with the repost. 
you should also let your stamina regenerate a little bit. You have a couple seconds before they uh, wake up from the repose animation. Another charge R2. He decided to summon, which is good for me, because I got the charge R2, then the unsheath, and then another unsheath, and that got me the poise break, so I was able to kill him before he could respond. Uh, and then after that, I just have to put Fatty to sleep and uh, hit him with a unsheath or two, and he's dead. After the fight is done, they give you the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number 4. And so that's it for the regular Smithing Stone Bell Bearings. You can now buy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, you can upgrade the Uchi to plus 24 if you want, and then get the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone uh, and upgrade that bad boy to plus 25 and just have a super strong weapon for the rest of your game. And then after that, we just need to get one more Somber Stone Bell Bearing. So you're going to keep progressing through Far Amazula. You're going to come across this floating segment here. Uh, and then you're gonna head across the floating area and fucking go past the Crucible Knight here. And then you come to the worst spot in the entire game, which is this area with the dragon and the fucking birds. But fortunately, since your weapon's upgraded high, um, you shouldn't have too much trouble killing the birds. Just try to take them on one at a time. Uh, you'll see here, so there's this group of two up here. God, I hate these fucking birds. I hate them so much. These are by far the worst enemy in the game. Um... And then there's another one up on this higher roof, so kill him. You can jump down and hit this guy with the plunging attack. And then come down here, just keep dodging the lightning. If you have something like a jar cannon, a hand ballista, a bow, something like that, um, that obviously makes killing the birds at range a lot easier. I tried using fire pots, it didn't work out all that well. Uh, but, you know, just try to lure them out one at a time. Uh, and that makes dealing with them relatively simple. Uh, except for this one, fuck that one. So what you're going to do is uh, you can kill this dragon and it will drop, I think, a ancient dragon smithing stone. Um, so you'll have two for this run. Uh, but I didn't bother to do that. If you just run past it, then he disappears because, uh, you know, I didn't feel like fighting the fucker. Uh, and then in this gazebo behind him, there's a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. So we can also make a plus 10 somber weapon using this guide. Uh, and then you're going to keep heading through the area. You're going to come to this temple thing. And in the altar, right behind the lightning guy here, uh, there is the final bell bearing, the somber stone miner's bell bearing number five. And then after that, since you're so close, you should just come around the corner, head up this elevator over here, and this takes you to a site of grace, so uh, you don't lose all your progress to the level. And then now, we head back to the Twin Maiden Husks, turn in the bell bearings, and we have access to all of the smithing stones, and uh, most of the somber smithing stones. Um, I didn't bother to get the Somberstone Miner Bell Bearing number one because it's just uh, kind of a bitch to get because you have to kill the Falling Star Beast at the Celia Crystal Tunnel. Um, so I didn't feel like making an extra boss guide. I already did like three or four bosses in this guide uh, and it's long enough as it is. So yeah, you just buy them from EG. Uh, you're better off doing that. Anyway, if you found that helpful or interesting, uh, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Leave any questions or feedback that you have down below. And I'll catch you later.